In the last episode, we explored Nukahiva Island, one of the most remote places on Earth. In this episode, we sail to Uapau to find chocolate, then push on to the stunning Tuamotus. It's anchor up time from Nukahiva. It's been an amazing part of the journey. Love it. Unique, beautiful, unlike anywhere else in the world. There you go. So we are heading south, just a short hop to Uapau. Which I'm sure we're nailing the pronunciation of. It's about 26 miles south. Pip's uh, doing an amazing job of the washing. The anchor's coming up. Thanks, Nokahiba. It was special, eh? Yeah, it was really, it's really nice here. First time to leave. <laughs> We've been here for a while. As you sit there and sip your tea, yeah. sailing away from Nukahiba, yeah. in years to come, how will you think of your time or our time there? It was very special. I think coming to somewhere like Nukahiba that has such a dramatic landscape and friendly people and fresh fruits and vegetables, it was just like, how can you not think kindly on such a place? I think we'll definitely look fondly upon it. Everyone's here. New destination. <laughs> it was a casual 26 nautical miles across here this morning. Yep. It was good to move. It was sporty. It was sporty. Casual, yeah, all right. Now. Yeah, we're, we're double reefed. <laughs> It's lovely now, yeah. but it's a bit splashy. Are you gonna bring a dandel out? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you gotta go back and get your dandel. Your dandel's in there somewhere. Hey, you might be barefoot from me. I can't see the hole. Yeah, right where you put your foot. You gotta dig around until you Careful, find it. Careful, it'll sink. Don't lose it. You've got no other shoes to wear here. <laughs> and it's a new dandel. Oh. Oh. Embrace it, embrace it. Okay. Success! <laughs> Why wouldn't do that again? Pips just went straight through the middle. Dream garden! Jump in there with your feet too, Chip. In the water. Coming off? We had heard from fellow sailors that there was a man living in the bush growing and making his own chocolate. So we went exploring and found Manfred the Chocolate Man. Sorry, are you having dinner? <laughs> what do you say? Would you like to try one? Yeah. Oh, mate. I'll try one. Yeah. Like chocolate. We had a delicious taste test, purchased some blocks of chocolate and made our way back in the dark. How was that? Oh, super interesting. He's a very eclectic man who has lived a very large life. He's Super interesting. Now I can see you have billions of stories. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, just fascinating. He's created himself his own little paradise up there. I asked if he was alone. He said his, his wife is away at the other village visiting her sister. So he obviously has a, a wife from here, which is lovely. The home that they've made is, is neat. And what did you think about his muscles? Oh, 
He's quite strong. I would say um, Archie will probably have muscles like that when he's that age too. He's 70 and he's like, hey, it's strong. You feel it. Shana's like, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> you like. So he flexed his biceps and made me feel his arms. <laughs> I'm like, okay, can I eat your chocolate too? Okay, thanks. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye <laughs> now. Oh, what a character. Absolutely. Anyway, we've got to traverse the uh, muddy path yeah, in the dark. have to do the waterfall another time. Pip did the waterfall. <laughs> well, we've just made it back to street lights. <laughs> yeah. I love a plug. <laughs> but I'm good now. Oh, it's dark. That was dark. Dark and jungly. You can still see the silhouettes of the of the hills. Hopefully you can hear me, but we're leaving the Marquesas today and we're headed to the Tuamotus. It's quite sad to say goodbye to the Marquesas. It's your first landing point when you first arrive after 4,000 miles at sea from Panama. Things that we've loved about the Marquesas, um, just exploring and the manta rays that we got to see uh, in Tahoe Bay, some of the hikes we've been on up to the lookouts and up to the like the thing that probably has bothered me the most was the uh, rolly anchorages. These islands are not protected by reefs, so the, the waves from the southeast trades can come straight into the bays, and the bays are quite rolly. And even on the catamaran, some of the nights we were sleeping, and just your bed starts creaking, things start rolling about, jars and bottles, you hear them go clink, clink, and every time we go over a wave, so. That's probably the one thing that's bothered me about this beautiful place. But um, during the day, you can get off the boat and go and enjoy and explore. So it hasn't been a, a huge bugbear, but it has been one of the things that I would say. Um, I'm looking forward to a flat anchorage in the Tuamotus. So we are motor sailing away from Puapal. Yep. And the weather around it is a wee bit crazy. We're on the lee side of it or the protected side of it. And we've had 30 knots, we've had... Five knots. Five knots. We've had starboard, we've had port, and uh, it's about three days to the Tuamotus. So we actually need to boogie along on this one. It's based on uh, the, the weather that, that is forecast, I think, will move reasonably well. And we need to need to kind of be up in the sevens plus most of the way, and it'll work well. So the reason why speed is going to be important in this one is uh, at the other end, there's a, a reef pass we need to get through. We need good light, good tide. Right tide. And uh, if not, then we'll adapt uh, as needed. There's other assholes in and around the one that we're looking at. So if we have to, consider going to another one. Always good to have redundancy, but uh, we're away and we'll be there in three sleeps. Yep. Four moon sailing, pretty special tonight. Two reefs in the main, single reef in the Genoa. We're trucking along. Trade wing conditions, it's, it's pretty beautiful. Really beautiful. Good morning. We are uh, lovely conditions out. Um, blue water, blue skies, light, light wind, and uh, we're, we're poking along nicely, doing between six and seven knots, which is all we need to do. We're 24 hours away from the right tide to get into Whakaraba and so that's at about midday tomorrow. So we don't want to go too fast and we don't want to go too slow. We've had a good a good 48 hour run to where we are, put ourselves in a great position to be able to get that slack water through the, through the cut uh, and into the lagoon. Otherwise, lovely conditions. We do have uh, full sails up for the first time. 
true true wind is about 14 knots, uh, but it's about 1 140 to 150 true. So uh, you know it's it's behind us a wee bit, and that's okay. So we're doing well. Um, which is okay, which is great. Um, yeah, beautiful conditions out. Looking forward to being there this time tomorrow. How's it? Yeah. Looks pretty good to me, well done. That's a special bit of engineering, that one. I think this is Pips. <laughs> Just sailed 400 and a bit nautical miles, but the wind is just coming off as forecast. So we're going to be there in the morning. So we've just switched our port motor on, and we're going to have a chilled night, ideally. That was a good few days of doing a bit yeah. of sailing. Hey, it was beautiful, yeah. nice conditions. We were still we're doing, doing that thing. We're doing the we're thing excited. where it goes. Oh, there's not enough wind. You're doing four knots. You're like, all right, we got to do something. Oh no, 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 no. Uh, here's six knots of boat speed and you know, eight knots of breeze. Like, oh no, we've got this. So for the past few hours, we've been like... Up and down. Four knots, six knots. Six knots gets us there, four knots, not so much. So we're gonna put the engine on, get some in the bank, and then if we see the breeze pick up, we'll get the sails back up. Yeah. Switch the engine off. Yeah. But at the moment, we just need to keep moving forward. Yeah, so, so we can get there. We need to average 6.2 knots to get the tide at the right time, which we can do easy. Yeah. But, uh, well, we should be able to do it easy. We're not pushing. All right, cool. Let's put this away nicely, hey? Yeah. Hold on, team. Shona and I have just changed shift. And uh, we are approaching the first of the Tuamotu atolls. You always hope that the charts are spot on. But you hear rumours that the charts don't always line up with where the atolls and the reefs are. So, uh, naturally, we are uh, eyes and ears wide open. This is the first one that we're coming across here, which is about, what's that, 11 miles off. It's always good just to confirm it, and I've got it. You'll see it pop up just over here in the tick. That little speck there that you can see is uh, also 11 miles out. Uh, so the positive is, avionics and the radar are lining up. So we'll keep going, and. We'll continue to check it as we roll further south. We're just approaching the pass, as as Pip and Archie call it, Funny Hoover, because they don't like the Funny Rava. Sorry, because they don't like the sound of Funny Rava. So here we come into a Funny Rava, and our timing is impeccable. Yeah. What time's high? Low, uh, brother. Eleven forty. Should and be slack tide. It's eleven thirty right now. And, and we you have can kind of take it like within half an hour of, of the slack, so... Feeling blessed that our timing was good in yeah, this scenario. Yeah, absolutely. A really swift passage, to be honest. That we don't get it caught around any reef or anything like that. These guys are so nice to do Daddy still driving. What do you think? think it looks pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, when we pull the anchor up, we won't have to. Uh, Yeah. 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 Yeah.
to turn <laughs> down the slow in the Yankee chain. We didn't think we'd need to. But uh, safety first and let's look after the bottom of the ocean. So rather than starting the engines and pulling the boat forward, we're using people power. Not necessarily the best option, but that's what we're doing. How was it? natural environment yeah you are <laughs> we just uh gave the uh water line a bit of a scrub yeah and um floated our chain with some tenders so so that we don't get caught on the coral nailed it yeah It's a pretty special one, hey Perps? Yeah. It's glorious. Mm -hmm. Oh man. You've just got out of the water? Yeah. The other guys are still out there? I've been in the water like half of the day. <laughs> oh, are you ready to dry off? Yeah, I'm getting cold. Mm. Hello. Whoa. Hello, mate. There's so many. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> They're in our backyard. I know. We yes. just got them off the back of our boat. Who's keen for a swim? <laughs> I am good. There's like 15 of them. Yeah. I'll have to have another spot to find to have a skinny dip of, of the night time. <laughs> In the next episode, we batten the hatches as a huge storm rolls through, with the highest wind reading we've ever experienced. So good. Wiping the tickets on the. You want to come in? Look, they've got a window today up there. Oh, that's so good. And it's much more comfortable today with the sports. Nice.